What's up, World Talks TV? So, this video is geared towards people who have seizures or are individuals who find themselves always being in places where you have to naturally, like, think quick on your feet. You know, God has given you that natural instinct because the Holy Spirit is with you during critical times. And I just want to share like an experience, a few experiences that I've been having over the years. Those of you all who are new to my channel, welcome. Make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. If you are a returning viewer, I appreciate you so much for just watching my videos. You know, sometimes you never know if you really have something to say or people gonna be engaging in what you put out on social media. But I am grateful for your consistency. In the month of April of 2024, my goal is to reach at least 320 subscribers. So if you can help out with that by sharing this video or sharing any other videos that have blessed you, I would really appreciate that. You know, small goals, little milestones. That goes a long way, and I've just been trying to be super consistent. Okay, so let's get into this video. I had a situation in, let me see. Okay, when I was about 13 years old, I used to go to California for the summertime, and my godparents, which is my godmother, she had a lot of foster kids. So the first time that I ever saw a seizure was with one of the foster kids, and she literally fell on the ground and was foaming to the mouth. They turned her on her side and put a sugar cube in her mouth. Um, they also, before they put the sugar cube, they put a spoon in her mouth because I think she had diabetes and she had seizures. So I think that was the reason for the cube. Like, don't quote me on it, but I remember that cube, that sugar cube and that spoon. They put the spoon in her mouth to keep her from swallowing and biting on her tongue. And that was the first time I had you know, saw somebody physically have a seizure in front of me. And I never forget that because it was very traumatic for me because I didn't know what was going on, but it was natural for them, you know? So if you have ever been in a space where you saw someone have a seizure, then you could contest to like what, you know, I was feeling or, you know, was choking or anything like that. And it, that brings me to another situation where one of my really good friends had a son and when her son was like an infant, he had to be like six months at the time, I was over at her house and the baby had a cold. He had mucus stuck in his throat. And he couldn't breathe and he was turning colors. And I'm like, she panicking and I'm trying to stay as calm as possible. I'm like, Lord, help me. And this is around the time where I rededicated my life to Christ. If I were 2014, 2015, I rededicated in 2012. So 2013, 2014, 2015, around that time. And I just heard the Holy Spirit say, put your finger in his mouth. And I was so nervous that I'm like, his airways are already blocked, God. Like, why would I put my finger in his mouth? But it was for him to regurgitate, to make him throw up, to clear his airways. So I put my finger in his mouth and he threw everything up and he just started smiling. But just imagine a baby going from his regular complexion to blue because he was very light. And like I deal with only, I feel like the Holy Spirit told me, I'm not a nurse. I've always been curious to study nursing, you know, um, in the medical field. I've always been curious about to get the healing because I carry it, but just really like the miraculous of God. But anyway, that's another story. So I'm like, wow, that was another incident. So then there was another incident when, um, I lived in California and one of my roommates had just moved in. She was a young lady and i never forget it. She used to kind of annoy me just a little bit because she was young and she used to do stuff that was just like, why are you doing this? You have roommates, you know? But this particular day, I was recording like I'm recording now and I hear this big old, don't. I'm like, what in the heck is that? So I'm like, let me go downstairs and tell this girl like you need to be quiet because I'm literally recording. I go downstairs because she was in the kitchen and she's literally on the ground foaming at the mouth. And I said, I've seen this before. So I knew what to do. I knew she didn't have seizure. She was getting hot and sweaty. But she was just foaming and shaking. And I was trying to calm her down. I turned on her side. I told my, my other roommate, call 911. At this time, it was the middle of the pandemic. And the, the paramedics was coming out, you know? So... They asked me, like, how long did she have the seizure? The amount of time that the seizure is supposed to last between five and ten minutes. Um, and you're supposed to keep track of it, like, watch the clock and stuff. But make sure that you keep them um, as cool as possible because their body is already, like, overworking, you know. And to put them on their side is so that they won't choke on anything like saliva or throw up or anything like that, you know. So 
I'm just like, or their tongue be biting on their tongue and stuff. So turning them on their side really, really helps. And that was traumatic for me because my other roommates was like, hey, if you wasn't here, I don't know what would happen. She would have just been laying there and I would have caught the ambulance because you're never prepared for something to happen like that in an instant, you know? So just recently, um, while I was working, one of my children had a seizure. So normally he sleep, you know, at nap time and me and my um, coworker, we kind of monitor, we don't count it, we monitor the kids. And he know we wake up and he be having like little night terrors or he'll get up and start laughing. We'll be like, it's not morning time, it's not morning time. Lay down and go back to sleep. So I was telling this kid, lay back down. And I went over to him and like, I was like, turned him on his stomach to kind of like, wipe, you know, rub his back. And he ended up turning over and he was looking at me funny. So I asked my my um, co-worker, I said, do you see his face? So she turned the flashlight on and I, cause I stood him up. Cause I'm like, maybe you gotta go to the bathroom. And he's not really verbal. We don't really communicate that much. And when he do communicate, he speak all different languages. Cause he just come from a family that has him diverse, but he's still like a baby. You know what I'm saying? So we like trying to get him to talk. So I was trying to help him put his shoe on and she turned the flashlight on. His eyes was just like this. And he was like stiff as a board. Like he just got stiff. Like he never this heavy. She was like, he haven't finna have a seizure. So I never saw it manifest like that. All the other ones I saw, they was tilting over, foaming at the mouth and not getting stiff. So she was like, get him upstairs. So I said, call his, call his daddy and call, you know, the officer that work in our building so that she could communicate with the staff that I was coming up there. So I get to the, I couldn't even get to the end of the hallway when I felt him going, and, and he was making noises. He was making these gurgling noises. So I was like, uh, but she, my coworker knew what those signs was because her mother had done it just recently. So I'm like, dang, like this can manifest any type of way. So we're in the hallway and he doing, and I had him stomach because I picked him up to carry him. Like I was picking him up already, but he was kind of like a little heavy, so I was lifting up a little bit more. And then I could feel him, and then he just started throwing up. So in this moment, you having a seizure, he having a seizure, he throwing up. There's no way that I can turn him on his side because I got to let the throw up come out. So once the throw up came out, he was still in seizure mode, and I laid him on the ground. I laid him on the side. By that time, we had some workers come, the nurse come, and I was feeding him, but he was turning blue. He was turning blue, the fingertips were turning blue. And I was just saying, stay with me, stay with me. And I started pleading the blood of Jesus because at this point, can't nobody help me but the Lord. Because I've been with him this entire time by myself. So we called the, po the ambulance, we called the police. The police kind of coaching us on what to do. I'm staying calm. Uh, the nurse, she was a little rowdy. She was a little like, it's emergency, like, you know what I mean? And I'm just kind of like, Lord, be with this baby. Be with this baby. And then God said, fan him. People used to talk about my big hands my whole life, my big hand, my big feet, but that's all I had to fan this baby, and I was cooling him off. You know what I'm saying? So that happened. The paramedics came, they got him off to the children's hospital. Some of the workers that was there was like, You handled that with so much grace. You were so calm. You did such a good job. And I'm like, I can't even take the credit for this. Okay? It was nothing but Jesus himself that had me calm in that moment today. It just reminded me of like my brother in Christ when I lived in LA, he used to say, you going through all this type of stuff because it's gonna be moments where people gonna be chaotic, they gonna be scared, they ain't gonna know what to do and you gonna be the calmest person in the room because you can hear from God and you trained yourself to hear from God and God gonna give you the solutions, he gonna give you the answer. He was like, you going through all of this, it's hard to trust God, it's hard to have faith and you getting anxious and stuff because it's gonna be a moment several moments that's gonna come where you're gonna be the calmest, cool, collective person in the midst of chaos. And like, when when I got this letter, it reminded me of this. So I'm gonna read y'all this letter and I'm gonna wrap up this video. I just had to tell y'all this and I just empathize with people that have several things going on with them. So we got gift cards, me and my um, classroom and my um, my coworker. To Miss Moore and Miss Blank. Thank you so much for your prompt attention and action to my son's seizure. We can't imagine the immense stress that unexpected situation put you in. By all accounts, you handled the emergency with grace, urgency, and poise. Your actions that they likely minimize any effects the seizure may have had on our son. This weekend, he was back to his normal self, and we are letting him have his teacher. He has peace, except he did hard. He's about gratitude. Sincerely, their parents. 
And it was just like, no, 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 chief. You gonna make me put that cone back on your head? No. In the midst of all this, I got a dog. Yeah, I watched the previous videos and I'm trying to get him not to lick himself, but I'm trying to have him take the cone off. I'm gonna let y'all see him. So yeah, I just want to share that with y'all. If you ever found yourself in that situation or if you don't know what to do, hopefully what I've shared with you is helpful. And I just thank God for being with me and being a friend to me because I wouldn't know what to do in half these situations because I don't have a degree in none of this stuff, you know? So I love you. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. Make sure you like, share, comment, show experiences, um, tips, and things like that. Make sure you share this video and empathize with people who have situations going on that they just cannot control, you know? And always cry out for help. If there's nobody physically around, cry out for Jesus. Ask Jesus to help you help the person, okay? Because he will. I get catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out.